All right, this is unit number five, and we're working on work and kinetic energy. So uh, unit number five is a pretty short one. It's the last one right before our uh, semester, right before the end of our semester. So the last one of this semester, and then we'll have the semester exam. Um, but we're going to start off this chapter just talking a little bit about work, making sure we understand there's an equation, obviously, for work, and we'll uh, help you with that. Um, and then we're going to take kind of a commercial and talk a little bit about um, uh, a concept called product and or, uh, see cross product and dot products, and then uh, and then we're going to talk about power, and then we'll finish off a little with uh, with energy, with kinetic energy. Um, so that's this chapter. Uh, it's going to take us about uh, roughly eight days to get through it. I don't know how many videos, but uh, eight class days probably. So we're going to uh, first start off with on page one. We're going to talk about work. Um, what do you think work is, and then, uh, and then we're going to step into uh, what is it? How does a physicist um, look at work, and what is work in terms of a physics definition? So, if someone said "get to work," what would that mean to you? Well, I can speak for myself. When I, when I was growing up, my mom would say, "Would you get to work?" That would probably mean mow the lawn. Um, that would probably mean clean, uh, clean my room. Uh, maybe pick up, um, or homework. And I think uh, when someone says get to work, like my mom said to me when I was growing up, there is there is a there's there's a concept of work or a definition for work that we've conjured up in our minds that we have when someone says get to work. Um, but when a physicist thinks about work, it's not necessarily the same thing. There is some crossover, and so there are some similarities. And so I don't want to say it's totally different, but um, there are some differences. And so down the, down in the in the key concept box, we're gonna uh, make a transition, and we're gonna uh, move away from this whole layman's definition for work, what you kind of maybe grew up with, and move into um, a concept of work that a physicist might be thinking about. And when we talk about work in terms of physics, there's three requirements that you have to satisfy. If you don't satisfy all three of these, then whatever you're doing is not work in the eyes of a, of a physicist. And so here they are. First one that has to happen is force. You have to exert, you have to exert a force. Um, if you don't exert, if you're not pushing something, or if you're not pulling something, there's no force or there's no work being done. Period. I don't care what else is happening. All right, the next one, something has to move. Okay, displacement. Something has to move. Um, so you can like if I push on, if I push on this table like I'm, I'm pushing down on this paper right now. Well, I'm exerting a force. But I'm not making the paper move. So if I don't make the paper move, then I'm not doing any work on the paper. So you have to have a force. You got to have movement. And uh, let's see, an object must move uh, as a result of the force exerted. And then the last one is, I'd say, the hardest one: a force or a component of the force and motion and movement must be parallel to one another. So if you're pushing to the right, the movement has to be to the right. If you're pushing up, the movement has to be up, or a component of that movement has to be up. I think the first two are easy to understand. I think the third one is what's tough. And uh, in the next video, we'll do some examples to help you um, maybe solidify that concept or that new definition of for work that we've got.